Hi, and welcome back to Stock Talk. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, this is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, today I'm going to start out with a lesson, as I always do. And it's a little bit different because I'm answering a question with respect to where to enter these big cap stocks that everyone's talking about. Is this the time to buy Tesla? Is this the time to buy Amazon, uh, Apple, Microsoft, all these big names? And uh, I want to show you sort of a framework that I would use as opposed to saying this is a buy and this is not a buy. I will get into that as we get into the individual stocks. I'm going to start out with those big names just to kind of kick off the year and make sure we're starting on the same page. Um, but I want to give a lesson as to how I would go about doing that. So let's get into this um, agenda. And it's really more of a wealth building uh, lesson. All right. A lot of the time I'll do the lesson on trading tactics. And while this is the same sort of tactics where we want to go up on higher time frames, longer time frames, and get a really good feel and have a change of mindset. We want to have we want to think about the world a little bit differently when we're trying to build wealth. So I want to get into that. Um, and a part of that is going into kind of forgetting about trying to pick a low in a stock. All right. And then I want you to understand, and this is right out of my book, um, how to understand when uh, you're buying good weakness versus when you're buying bad weakness. Um, and then finally, what I've used with institutional money managers for the past 32 years is helping them understand how to go about um, getting trend alignment on the monthly and the weekly. And this is really where I would recommend you guys focusing your efforts if you're going to buy some of these big names. Um, so we're going to get into all that and then we're going to go through the stock requests that came through. I have a number, a couple of weeks worth of requests, so a lot to talk about in this show. Let's go ahead and get going now. So as we move into the lesson, the first thing I want you to truly understand is um, that as I said, I've worked with institutional money managers. I've worked with value managers for the past 25, 30 years. I have worked with momentum guys and growth guys, growth at a value, kind of across the board, every single type of money manager out there. And what I've noticed is the value guys tend to be the quickest to want to buy something as it's dropping. And I've worked with these guys for a long time and taught them that you really don't have to buy on the left side of a bell-shaped curve, meaning if something's dropping and it's got good momentum to the downside, we can push this as far as we can to the right uh, of this bell-shaped curve, this saucer pattern that'll tend to develop after a stock has really been hammered to the downside. Now, we can look for signs of momentum loss to the downside to start doing some nibbling. And uh, big funds that I work with, I'll, I will suggest uh, that they buy maybe a little bit early, but not in size. They'll buy a smaller position here. And then as it starts to show strengthening uh, across the board and the weight of the evidence that I look at, then they can add to that and continue to add and their cost basis will be pretty low. What I really try and guard against is buying when this still has momentum to the downside. And we don't know where this is going to actually hit bottom. We're looking for for this to move from weak hands to strong hands, okay? Strong hands being big money that is willing to step in and stop the decline. We don't have that in a lot of these big names yet. And um, so I'm going to go into those, but I wanted to make sure you understand as long as we're kind of accelerating to the downside and showing momentum to the downside, you don't need to be in a big hurry. Um, so that's kind of the first point here. Second thing is when we look at pullbacks in a market, we want to buy good weakness. That's where, and I want to use this blue line as like an 18 month moving average. If we're pulling back to the 18 month line, that's good weakness. We want to be buying into good weakness. Okay, now it, we would use the smaller time frame weekly to help us determine when the timing is. But if we can find stocks in and around a rising 18 month line, I have absolutely no problem trying to be aggressive uh, in that situation. But if we've, if we've broken the 18 month and it's rolled over, we have to be really careful about being aggressive here. As I've said, I've worked with money managers for, for 32 years now and, you know, where 
where I can see my value add is when they're trying to buy something that is bre broken down and it's trending to the downside and it's showing no sign of improved relative strength. And we just don't know where the market is going to determine where the price has value. We want to wait for that to happen first. We don't want to be the first ones there. Um, I don't like starting to buy here when the momentum is still to the downside like this and we're below a declining 18 month because you could add here and then you know you could be seriously underwater and get scared out down in this region when you actually should start to get interested because the momentum is starting to slow so um, let's look at the final piece of the puzzle for me and that's where now the, this is the process I use for the institutional money manager where as a stock is bottoming um, and we get weekly and monthly trend alignment together. I want to really build up a position and have a big, bigger position when that's in place. The best performing stocks in their portfolios will happen when they have both of these aligned. Okay, and um, and then once it works up into an area where it's gotten overbought and the weekly chart starts to show signs of weakness, then we want to reduce the position um, until we get back into this value area where it starts to turn the corner again and the weekly chart starts to show divergence and the monthly trend is still to the upside or it starts to turn around again. Then we can add to a position if they're still in it or um, you know, uh, re-enter if they if they got out uh, up here. So this is the process. So you can buy in two different ways. You could buy um, after a move to the upside, and we get a, a significant correction. Um, but we want to look for signs of alignment. That's where either we're coming out of a base and we're seeing signs of improvement or we went through a huge up move and going through a correction and we need signs of, of alignment with the monthly and the weekly. And that means this 18 month is starting to flatten out or turn and we're getting improved momentum on the uh, weekly chart. Let's go ahead and get into the individual stocks uh, uh, that I want to talk about or that were asked about and see if you can see this uh, with real patterns. Just briefly, my services can be found at RabelStockResearch.com uh, on the services tab. And in fact, at the top of that is the course as well. Um, the one thing I'd mention is if you take the individual package monthly, uh, you will have access to the uh, course as well. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. As we move into the individual stocks now, uh, one of the things I want to make sure I covered is why I call this wealth building. Uh, because I look at this a little differently in terms of the way you're trying to, when you're trading and you're trading off of shorter time frames, even a daily chart um, with an hourly or anything interday, I think I would be looking at that as an income generating strategy. Whereas if you're looking at weekly charts and monthly charts or higher than that, you're, go you're looking for wealth building. And what that means to me is you're trying to buy good companies at the right time. You're incorporating timing into what you're doing, trying to get in at the right time so that you can ride them for a long period of time as opposed to just getting in and getting out all the time. Um, these types of strategies, I think if you can learn them, can really help you build wealth, um, especially in your longer term accounts like IRAs and 401ks and all that. So um, I want you to think that way. And the other thing I want you to think about is if, if we're looking to buy something, a good company and um, at the right time and let it ride for several years, if you think about it, you've got stocks like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Tesla, Google, they all just did that. They all, if you look at their long-term charts, they just went five to 10 years to the upside, uninterrupted, uh, a big strong move. And the question I have for you is when you think about like looking to rebuy them, think about it this way. These basically just ran a marathon, these stocks, a, a marathon to the upside upside and uh, a pr pretty powerful one. Amazing. They did re had a really good time on their marathon. And now they're, you know, they're in the tent, they're getting water, uh, they're getting their, you know, bananas in them and stuff like that. They're trying to mend. And I think they have to go through a mending process, a resting process and a, re a rebuilding phase, like a new basing phase in order to be ready for another marathon. I mean, is it likely that you finish one marathon and then start another one right away? I don't think so. So if you think about it in those terms, I think it'll help you be a little bit more patient. Now, in, in terms of, I showed you these pretty pictures 
And uh, I know in the, you know, during the lesson, I'm showing these pretty pictures and I know it looks so easy when you're looking at it with graphics, but when you look at it with real chart patterns, it becomes a lot more difficult. So I want to try and simplify it a little bit in with real patterns. Okay. So a few of the things you really want to key on. Number one is this 18 month line. Okay. If, if we're above a rising 18 month line, then uh, the longer term chart is, is in an uptrend and we want to use the weakness to take advantage of it. All right. So a break of that 18 month line is, is very important to me uh, because I know that that's shifting the bigger trend and we can go back and see um, there, there were a few times in Apple where we did drop down below the 18 month and found support at the 40, which is what we're doing right now. Um, but um, there's a few other things that I, or, that I would be watching. Number one is the zero line in MACD on a weekly chart. OK, this has been above the zero line for years. OK, and now we're breaking below that. We even tested it and had a zero line reversal to the downside. So that's point number two. So first thing is the 18 month line. The second thing is this zero line on the weekly chart. If we stay below the zero line, if we break the zero line, both lines break it in a you know pretty violent way. And especially if we test it and fail, I think you have to be concerned until this gets back above and recovers the zero line. You have to sort of assume that it's confirming the bearish trend of being below the 18 month. Now, the third thing that I'd be watching is the relative strength because we can have periods where we get a harsh move to the downside that shows up in a, a MACD coming down or whatever. But notice how this relative strength was going to new highs during the correction. So that, uh, that was actually during the bear market in 2020. So we want to watch relative strength. Uh, we want to watch this 18 month and we want to watch the MACD. I think these are three really important keys. Now, I'm not, I'm not dissing my, one of my favorite indicators and that's uh, ADX. But what I have noticed is how important the zero line is for the trend. Sometimes it's an oscillator indicator, and I've done, I've done some videos on this. I've done some lessons on this. And then there are other times where it turns into a great trending indicator. And trading and breaking the zero line in stocks that have been holding it for a very long time are incredibly important. So, so there's three ways this could play out. OK, number one is you could do this bell shaped curve that I was talking about. Right. You, you keep dropping and then you start to show signs of momentum loss and you start to work sideways and then you turn the corner. So stocks like Square, PayPal, they look like they finally lost momentum to the downside. They're just starting to base. They're early. They're early on the base, but it does look like they found some semblance of support. Um, you've got other patterns which are um, what I'd call like a undercut and rally, all right, where you have a key level of support, you break it, and then you rally back up in a sharp way. Even though everything is rolling over, you're below the 18 month, you're below everything. I would go look at a stock like uh, MasterCard or Visa. So this is an undercut pattern and it's, it's holding again. Apple could still do that. You see how it undercut this really key level here? Let me just draw this in. This is a very key level we've undercut. If this comes down and rallies up like this and turns like that, that would change my whole opinion. We don't have to go through this big, long basing phase. All right, so we can be on the lookout for that in this stock. But as I go through these others, you'll see that you can't really do that in those stocks. Um, so this is the one stock that has the potential for that. And again, I'd go reference MasterCard and Visa and see if this can play out that way. We're going to need to see the relative strength improve if that's, that's going to happen. Let's take a look at another one. So Amazon had its chance at that undercut and rally here. You see how this broke and it tried to rally, but it couldn't. It failed and broke below the 18 month line with poor relative strength. MACD, and notice what happened. Look at where we started, right at the beginning of 2022. You see how the MACD crossed the zero line for the first time in a long time? That was right where we broke the 18 month line, 18 month line right here. So if we look at it, we've got this confluence of indicators. MACD on the weekly telling us one thing, the monthly MAC, uh, 80, uh, I'm sorry, the 18 MA break is telling us another, and the relative strength was already down for a year. So that was a big, huge negative right at the beginning of the year. We knew this stock had real problems. Now we're looking for the opposite of that. We can't do an undercut and rally. The next thing we could do is some form of a spike pattern and then form a ledge. That would be the shortest 
quickest way to turn this around without doing, again, this long basing phase pattern. So that could be one thing we're on the lookout for, but we're nowhere near that. One thing that I would do is draw a downtrend line on all these. All right. And as long as we stay below the downtrend line, there's nothing to do. We're still looking for that one, two, three pattern to develop on the weekly chart. And until that happens, there's really not a whole lot to do, especially if the relative strength is hitting new lows. So no rush on this. We're looking for either a sign of a spike in ledge formation where we form a base in a quicker way with relative strength improvement and preferably a one, two, three reversal, or we got to let it base out again, like the squares and the PayPal's are doing. Um, look at Microsoft. So I can draw in a trend line on Microsoft and say, I've got nothing here. As long as we stay below this trend line and this relative strength trend line stays intact, we don't want to be in a hurry. Now, what I would be on the lookout for are these big round numbers. You see 200, there's pretty good support here. Can we do some kind of a spike here and then form a ledge? Well, that could make it a quicker kind of a turnaround. Um, if I want to use a spike and ledge, look at it, go back and look at an XLF. Look at what happened to that during the bear market in 2020. It made a spike and then it formed a ledge. And when it took out the high of the ledge, it kind of got going again to the upside. So use that as a reference to what I'm talking about, um, but something to be on the lookout for. But again, that'll still take the shape of a one, two, three reversal. Until we break the downtrend line, there's really nothing to do here. So uh, be patient. It's very possible this could take a very long time to turn around. Meta got crushed. This is interesting though. You look at where MACD crossed down below right near the beginning of 2022. Look at where this broke the 18 month line. Look at what happened to the relative strength at that point. We had those three things telling us, okay, this is a hands off situation until we can reverse those components. Um, now we can trade these patterns. We could make a move here and hold uh, and do some kind of a, like a, a reversal pattern and hold the 18 week. And if there's room up to here, we could play up towards the 18 month line. So I'm not saying you can't trade it, but do I really want to buy this unless I get one of those three situations, undercut and rally, a spike in ledge, or a basing pattern to form. I don't want to do it. I'm, I, I don't, it's to me, it's way too early unless any of those things take place. We don't know how long this process is going to take, but notice how this did form a low at the hundred big round number. Um, Tesla still has meaningful momentum to the downside. Look at how strong the weekly ADX is. Look at where we broke the zero line here in April. And that was really the first break of the 18 month line. Now we've got the roll, uh, the uh, relative strength line rolled over and hitting new lows. So are we due for a rally in this? Yeah. I mean, we're getting, I've given you strategies on how you could say this comes down to a hundred and shows some kind of a reversal. You want to play this back towards the 18 week? Well, you're going to have to play it off the daily chart and look for a trade there. I mean, I'm not saying you can't do that, but the question was asked about long-term investment. And unless this makes a big spike here and then can form a ledge, there's really nothing to do unless we form some kind of a base. And I think a lot of these are probably going to base out. That's my guess. Um, Google, same problem. Trend line in place here, trend line in place here. Until that changes, there's nothing to do. Big support at 75, so we can look for a sign of some kind of a spike in volume. But uh, until that happens, nothing to do. Netflix is a little different. You see how this rallied here? We got a really strong rally. Well, we could have played this pullback on the weekly into the resistance on the monthly, but that doesn't mean we're reversing the trend. Okay. This is not formed. This, this has got like an undercut pattern, but it hasn't tested 250. It would need to come back and test 250 to be that undercut and rally pattern. So let me just show you, I want to, I want to give you an example. Go back and look at when this was violent. You see the violent decline this had and it got stretched away? Well, it rallied up and it not only rallied up, it went, it basically doubled in price and then came all the way back down to a new low. Now, I'm not saying that this has got to go back down to a new low, but I, I mean, we've only rallied 50% off this bottom. It might go up a little bit more, hit the 18 month, and then it could come right back down and test the support area around 250 or potentially come all the way back down to the lows again. So until I get the pattern that I'm looking for, I'm not going to do anything from a longer term standpoint. I could trade it, but that's about it. Um, all right, let's go through some other requests. Now, some of those stocks were requests as well, so it worked out pretty well. Um, so if we look at this, um, 
We've got uh, HAL running into some resistance up here at 40. I mean, this is holding in really well when you look at it relative to um, energy. I mean, a lot of energy stocks are breaking their 18 weeks and working their way back down to the 18 months. So Schlumberger and Halliburton holding up really well right now. Um, I'm sort of impressed by that. But as long as the group is kind of a little iffy, I don't know that I'm all that interested. If this breaks through 40, I guess you have to give this, um, you know, a really hard look. Uh, this is more of what I'm seeing in energy. Let's just look at um, how violent this bar was right here. See how strong of a bar that was to the downside? And then we tried to rally up and then came back down and now we're testing these lines. I mean, we could potentially come down here and test the 18 month and re-break this. Now that wouldn't change the longer term trend, but it's telling us that it's gonna be a longer correction. So kind of important how this reacts right here, right now at uh, $45. If it gets back up through 50 without breaking 45, I think you could consider this. Um, because we get getting back above um, this big red bar here. So uh, still long-term pattern looking pretty good. Now, San Mina has been just a phenomenal stock. It had a little bit of an extended move here to kind of finish the run. And now it's going through a correction. Um, what I would tell you is that this correction has been a little bit more than I would like to see. So you've broken this, the uh, signal line here. So my ex expectation is that we go through some kind of a correction pattern like this. Momentum on the ADX is telling you this is still fine longer term, but the MACD is telling us it's probably going to take a little bit more time. We don't have to be in a big hurry. We don't have to buy this first pullback to the 18 week. We can give this a little bit more breathing room, give it a little bit more time. Um, now, IBEX Industrial, look at the strength here. You see this move to the upside? Look at the strength in this rally. Now we're pausing and we're doing it in a really orderly way. I mean, this is pretty strong. I, I, I'm really hoping what this does is set up a zero line reversal, get this ADX a little bit lower and get our signal, a zero again, a zero line reversal with low ADX and get an opposing trend pattern here. And then as this triggers to the upside, you could be getting in on this weekly pullback. So that's how I would be looking at this. Definitely one to keep a close eye on. This is the same idea. Now this pullback's getting a little steeper here. You can see kind of a big red day here. Um, this week's a little bit deeper pullback, but there's a tremendous amount of support underneath. Really good momentum. So we have low ADX here and strong ADX here. I love that pattern because it's telling us we've got this base formed and now we're getting new momentum showing up on this time frame. What's missing? We need a trigger and the trigger is going to come on the daily chart. We need to see this. Now this line's coming down through here. We need some form of a reversal to take place before we can be interested in this, but certainly something I'd be watching really closely from that standpoint. Um, another uh, Indian stock. So long up move, strong up move here. And then we go through this long consolidation on the monthly chart. Very healthy the way it's been going sideways. Um, we're doing the same thing on the weekly. Now, what's the trigger here? It's a little bit more difficult because you can't really draw a trend line. It's taken a long time. I would probably be looking for the first time we make a higher low where the 18 is cupping around. You see how both times we rallied up here, we broke the 18, rallied up here, broke the 18. Let's see if we can get above the 18 and hold it. Then we'd have two time frames, monthly, weekly, in un working together in alignment. And we have real potential to the upside if that happens. Now, IBM is pretty interesting because <laughs> you've been, this is totally different than most of the other big tech, right? It hasn't done anything. It's been an underperformer during this whole phase, but it has been forming this base. The key level is around 150, maybe a little bit higher. And it tried to get through it, but couldn't close it. So what I've been telling my um, subscribers is we really need this to close on a weekly basis with some strength, preferably some volume. I'd love to see green DI get going as well. Have a nice big green bar breaking out above all this resistance here. And that could kickstart a whole new trend to the upside. Don't poo-poo this because it hasn't done anything. It's doing all the right things right now in, form, in terms of forming a base. If it gets a trigger, I think you could take this pretty seriously. Let's take a quick look at gold because 
Um, gold and silver both making a really strong move off the low. You see how dynamic a move this is? It's getting through the 18 month line. Now what's missing? If we look at our pattern, the one I was talking about with Visa and MasterCard, we have an undercut, we undercut a key low, and then we've driven up through this old low. Now we need to use it as support. We need some kind of a consolidation, pause, pullback. And if it sets up that way, I think I would take this very seriously. Notice how in the MACD, worked off this overbought condition and came all the way back down to the zero line. Now we have low ADX. So this is set up in a way that's pretty interesting, but it needs a little bit more work. Silver is very similar and it's actually looks like it's starting to pull back off of a little bit of resistance. It rallied up into this resistance area after a nice move. And I think it needs to set back towards this support area around 20. Now, if we can come back to 20 and turn up from there, preferably with an opposing trend trigger on the daily. I mean, if it can play out that way, then you'd have all three time frames kind of telling you we'd have this undercut and rally pattern formed. And I think that would be a really attractive setup if it can play out that way. So I would definitely be on the lookout watching gold and silver as they pull back in here. Thanks for joining me. My contact information is listed. Also, if you want to send a stock request in, send it to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great start to the new year and we'll see you next time.